You see badness. And so one of the reasons that he has not come back, he wants, he wants to demonstrate to the world that man cannot better themselves. There is no human government that can bring peace on earth. Okay? So man cannot complain that God has not allowed full opportunity to experiment and test his own plans. Here's what one fellow said. Man has been permitted to do his utmost in ruling and regenerating the world. God, as it were, has put the reins of government into man's hands. Why? To show whether man was sufficient for these things, to show whether or not man was capable of governing himself. And boy, when you look at how man has governed themselves, it is a mess, isn't it? Think about that for a moment. Even, even the nation of Israel, look at what they did. I mean, God sent judges, you know, and they said, we don't want judges anymore. We want us a king. Remember that story? And God says, you want what? We want to be like other nations. We want us a king. Now, they, they, if they had just looked around them, they'd have seen what was going to happen. And God even told them, well, if I give you a king, you're going to have to pay taxes. You're going to pay revenue. You're going to need an army. And in this and this, it don't matter, we will be like others. And so even from the time of recorded time to our time, every empire, every nation, every worldwide empire has fallen flat on their face as far as bringing worldwide unity. We have a group today that's called the United What? Nations. <laughs> what a mess. Here's another statement. Throughout the ages, man's efforts have been directed toward ruling and regenerating the world. Man has been given full scope with what results? With the result uh, that the incurable hatred of the human heart to God and the utter depravity of human nature has been fully displayed. In other words, the Lord hadn't come back because he wants man to see for himself, and history verify, uh, uh, historical records verify this, that the longer man lives, does it get better or worse? Gets worse. Now we've seen some uh, the the, uh, the centuries. We have seen some great years, but nothing had never has never stayed permanent. Man has gradually gotten worse. Governments have gotten corrupt and wicked. So the Lord done that. Here's what another one said. But the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God and the folly of the world's wisdom and the vanity of man's claims are now displayed before our eyes. What has civilization effected? With all our so-called enlightenment and progress until what have we attained? Let the record of our, law, uh, of our law courts tell us. Let the columns of the daily newspaper make response. Have you read the newspaper lately? The only good thing you'll find in the newspaper are the comics. And some of those are not, not even very good. Okay? Let the economic, political, and moral conditions of the day make answer. Let war with all its inhumanities, its barbarities, its fiendish atrocities give reply and mark. It cannot be said that these things are due to man's ignorance and experience. Man is just not starting out to make history. And so what the point is this, that from the very time that God created man and put him here, and, and from the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden to our day, man has proven that he cannot, he cannot bring peace on this earth. Can't do it, it's impossible. The human heart is corrupt. And uh, I did the radio broadcast today, and Kevin and I sat down, and I read, I read uh, uh, part, uh, the latter verses of chapter 1 in Romans and the first part of chapter 2. Made some comments. And humanity, humanity is coming, becoming more and more vulgar, anti-God, anti-Jesus, anti-Bible. 
One of the reasons that Jesus has not come back, one of the reasons that God the Father has not told him to come back is because he wants the world to know and to fully realize that he cannot, he cannot, he'll never have peace and harmony until Jesus comes. Okay? Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody in the political office was saved, born again, spirit filled? Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> now, when I look at the Bible, and this is just my own perspective, when I look at the Bible, and I look at I look at the different kings and empires and rulers, the one guy that stands out to me that had that had that that wonderful touch as a ruler, one was Joseph. But he didn't rule very long, did he? And as soon as he died, the Babylonians took him into captivity. The second one that that stands out to me now the the greatest the greatest man in the Old Testament is Moses. Wow, what a, he's, to me he's the greatest. But the one man that stands out as far as leadership and leading a nation right and only, only suffered one defeat was Joshua. During Joshua's reign as king, Israel prevailed in every matter except the battle of Ai. And that wasn't Joshua's fault. But that's the only time. When you look at history, it doesn't matter what the empire it was, the Babylonian Empire, Medes, Persians, the Greeks, the barbarians, the Romans, every one of them had their time, had their stay, did this, did that, but they all failed. And America's going to fall too. Now I noticed if it's in there, I hadn't really seen it plain. I don't see America in, in prophecy. Wow. So, he's going to do that. It said, listen to this statement. It cannot be said that these things are due to man's ignorance and inexperience. No, God has given ample time, time enough to show that man is an utter failure. Time enough to demonstrate that he is totally incapable of governing himself. Time enough to prove that if relief comes at all, it must come from outside himself. Man cannot save himself. Man cannot pick himself up by his own boots. Man cannot change his nature. He has to have a new nature. The only way he can have that is to be born again. And even when he gets a new nature, the Holy Spirit, he still has the old nature. What's a dilemma, isn't it? A big dilemma. Here then is a, here then, listen, he says, God waits till harvest time. He has been waiting for the harvest time of man's schemes and efforts. He has been waiting patiently with sickle in hand. And as soon as the crops of humanity, of human industry, have fully matured, the word will go forth. Thrust thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So the Lord Jesus Christ will come back when the earth, when humanity is ripe. Wow. So one of the reasons that I believe the Lord has delayed his coming and the, and the Father hadn't told him was because so that man could fully see we're not getting the job done. Not getting it done. I mean, it's not working out. <laughs> We've got a a penal system in America. It's a la it's a joke, isn't it? I was reading a paper today, and uh, what was the young man's name that killed those killed those folks in that church? What was his name? Ruth. Ruth. Yeah, that cold blooded killer. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> that our government is going to spend millions and millions of dollars in a court case, and his lawyers is already asking for a mistrial. Already. Hey, that guy should have been dead months ago, a year ago. Should already been executed. But that's our judicial system. It's all we, we want to do everything by the book. No, you know what that is? That's corrupt lawyers and judges. That's all it is. You know what it is? Honestly, it has nothing to do with the, with, the, with the guy who did all the killing and the murdering. You see, they want to pocket every cent that they can get from our taxpayers' money. I mean, it's a mess. It's a mess. And... Uh, and somebody says, well, if, I, if, Brother Baker, if, that was, if that was your son, how would you feel? 
I don't know. I don't know. I would hope I would feel ashamed and embarrassed if if my son did something like that, murdered nine people in cold blood. So that's just one to show you. I mean, look at look at look at our nation. It's falling apart at the seams. It really is. Somebody asked a a uh, the mayor of New York said, uh, uh, "What would happen if New York was hit by Category Seven and Seven Point Five earthquake?" And he said, "Millions would die. The Twin Towers coming down would be like a birthday party." If one earthquake hit New York City, 7.5. Could that happen? It could. It could. So God, the Lord Jesus, has not come back, I believe, so that man can say, well, this, you know, the world's looking right now for somebody to help out. You know why it's going to be so easy for the Antichrist to come on the scene? Because the world's looking for somebody who's got the answers. Okay? Number two, why is the Lord not return? Well, that God might fully display his long suffering. I believe the Lord hasn't come back so that we that the that that God could display his long suffering. He is long suffering, you know, isn't he? My goodness. Think about this. Listen to what the uh, second Peter chapter three. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. Listen now. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I like what Dwight Pentecost said. He said, all through these many centuries, the Lord has been saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Uh, ever since the Savior left the earth, God has been dealing with the world in mercy instead of visiting it with judgment. In other words, mercy is not getting what we deserve. And I believe one of the reasons the Lord Jesus Christ has not come back, that the Father has not said, go get your bride, is that God, God wants to show forth his great tenderness and his great patience and long suffering. It's called long suffering. <laughs> Humanity shakes its fist in God's face. Hey, if you're a God, strike me dead. If you're a God, do this. There's no God. And boy, you can pick up magazines, read the paper. I mean, there's people out there. They take God's name in vain as if it was just a, a, a everyday conversation. Oh, you're one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you go to church. Yeah, okay. I mean, God has become, listen, he's becoming the laughing stock of the whole world. The only ones not laughing are those of us who are saved. But what the world don't realize, one day the Bible says, God, Joe Ben, God says, I'll laugh at their calamity. One of these days, God's going to laugh. And so I, I am so thankful for God's mercy, aren't you? And one of the reasons he hasn't come back is so that, so that nobody can ever say, well, God didn't care about me. God's patience toward our wicked race has been truly marvelous. Wonderful it is that the vials of his wrath have not been emptied upon the nations long ere this. What long suffering Jehovah has shown in bearing with such rebels whose 21 centuries. Why is it that the day, uh, here's what uh, what D.L. Moody said. Why is it that the day of salvation has lasted until it now exceeds in length every dispensation that has preceded it? Why? Why is it that the door of mercy still stands open wide and God is yet beseeching sinners to be reconciled to himself? God is is still sending forth the message telling a lost and dying world, come unto me, come unto me, 
Find rest for your soul. Find redemption. Find forgiveness of sins. Find a new life. Find a new future. Find a new family. Find grace. Find mercy. Come, come. And the world says, we don't need you. We don't need that. Think about this. Think of the multitudes of millions and millions of people, young people who are now adults and, and older, who were raised in Sunday school, Baptist Sunday schools, Baptist churches just like this, who've heard the gospel all their life, even supposedly made a, a profession of faith, supposedly, and yet now do not darken the doors of God's house and could care less. Their life is so eat up with, with the pleasures of this world. And now if you talk to them about church, living for God, they'll avoid you. Your own family, your own neighbors who at once were in church, raised in a godly home maybe, or raised in a Christian home. What is it? Well, I'm sure glad that God's showing mercy. Think about this. Joe Ben, how long you've been saved? You know, basically. Oh, how, how long you've been saved? About 30 years. Suppose Jesus come back 40 years ago. I'd be gone. I got saved 1960. I got saved 1969. I was 19 years old. If Jesus had come back 1968, I'd, I'd be dead and in hell. Well, I'm sure glad he's delayed his coming. You know what that tells me? Let's don't quit. Let's don't give up. Let's don't throw in the towel. Let's pray for our loved ones. Let's pray for our neighbors and family members and people we know. Let's don't give up. Jesus has not come back so that he can let the world. In other words, I, I love humanity. They spit in my, you see, they still spit in his face. They, they actually spit in his face when they, before he died on the cross. And they beat him and scourged him. And today they still spit in his face. I don't care about that Bible. There's no heaven, no hell. Good night. We've been hearing that all these years. What? That's a joke. That's just for sissies and, and whims. And God just, God says, I still love them. I still love them. When I was in high school, we were at a track meet. It was in the springtime. I, don't, I think I was in 11th grade. We were up in, a, up in Kershaw, South Carolina, and there was about four or five other schools there. And while we were there, a storm came up. It was in like early May, late April, and a storm came up. And, and so we sort of scooted, got on our bus, and, but it was lightning and raining. It's just a, you know, a bad storm. And there's, we look out there, in the middle of that track field is some guy. Now, I wasn't saved at the time. He's out there in the middle of that, of that track field, which is a football field, had a track around it. He's out there, here's what he said. He said, if there's a God, strike me with a bolt of lightning. <laughs> now, I wasn't a Christian. I was lost at the time. And that's what he was saying. There's no God. And now that I'm saved, <laughs> and here's God looking down at that pipsqueak. And that pick squeak, that, that, that creature is saying, if, if there's a God, strike me dead with a bolt of lightning. God doesn't need a bolt of lightning to kill somebody. God just stop his heart from beating and die. I wonder how many people have begged to die and God wouldn't let them die. Because the person dies without Jesus, where do they go? They go to hell. So I believe one of the second reasons why the Lord has not come back it's so that God can let all of humanity know, I love you and I care. And now, then thirdly, last of all, why does the Lord not return? In order that God might fully test the faith of his own people. That God might fully test the faith of his own people, us. To see what we're made out of. Wow. Think about this. Here are, uh, here are a bunch of whys that, that I want to share with you. Why those years of waiting for Abraham received Isaac? Hmm? Why that protected bondage in Egypt? 
Why those four centuries of silence between the ministries of Malachi and John the Baptist? Why a 4,000 year interval from the beginning of the promise of the woman seed until it's a realization? Why to test the faith of his people? The Lord has delayed his coming. I believe one of the reasons is so that he'll, he can look at us and, and say, I wonder what they're made out of. You see, we have the idea because we're saved that, man, everything's going to be given to us on a, on a, in, a, in, a, in a silver platter. Oh, we got it made. Uh, everything's hunky-dory and it's good. And, oh, i tell you what. You and I have been, hey, we've not been lucky. We have been blessed in America. Amen. I don't believe in luck one bit. There's no such thing as luck for a Christian. We have been blessed beyond measure in our country. We have not seen uh, the, the heartaches and troubles that other uh, Christians around the world have seen and are seeing right now. But I'm telling you, we could see it for us all over with. We could see it. And matter of fact, uh, with the, with the, closing of the last days we're going to see the Bible tells us if we live godly we will suffer persecution and if persecution hasn't gotten to come what does God got to do to test your faith if you lose your job what kind of Christian are you going to be huh? if you get sick what kind of Christian are you going to be if something comes your way that knocks you down and knocks you off your feet whatever it may be how are you going to handle that when your rocking chair is knocked out from under you and you're sitting flat on the floor, what are you going to do? When you've come to the end of your rope, what are you going to do? When the boat you're in has sprung a thousand leaks, what are you going to do? So I believe one of the reasons Jesus hadn't come back is to test our faith. See what we're made out of. See why we're going to do it. Are we going to stand firm? Are we going to go the way of the world? Hey, the world's going away from God. And the modern day church is getting away from the Bible. The modern day church is getting away from the gospel. The modern day church has become so, so compromised and, and so mixed. It's sickening. Well, today you can believe anything, do anything and call yourself a Christian. I, I, I saw, I saw uh, on Mrs. Baker's face. I could not believe it. They were on a mission trip in Haiti. And when they weren't mixing with the Haitians, they were down at the local pub drinking mixed drinks. <laughs> Are you listening to Brother Baker? Isn't that sickening? That you would take a mission trip and while you're there, uh, supposedly helping out those needed people. In the, but when you're away from them, you're right back in that same old world. Wow. Boy, that wasn't what we had when we went to the Denim and Brook, did we? No, sir, we. We didn't get all, all the mixed drink we got was water and water. Thank God for it, too, wasn't it, Joe Ben? Sam. And we're living a horrible day. Listen. And the closer, listen, the closer you live to Jesus today, the further the world's going to get from you. Uh, uh, he, here's, here's the illustration I, I've, I've given this sometimes over the years okay uh, here's, here's the world and here's, 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 the, here's the church okay All right. now, the, the church is, should be way up here right way above the world amen way above the world okay here's the world where the world's wicked full of sin ungodly and cannot buy here's the world Okay, now watch this. And, old, and the churches uh, save people way up here. We're not to be of the world, nor, nor associate with that world. Live in it, but not of it. Over the years, here's what's happened. As the world moved, what's, what's happening? The world's moving for the way, but very slowly. But more rapidly is the church. And now, and now, where's the church? Right where the world used to be. And now, you can't hardly tell the difference. And the world's getting further and further away from God. 
taken the church with it. If you and I, if we live godly unto the Lord, the world's not going to, they're going to look at us and say, wow. Wow. Or, hey. So I hope tonight, this little, these three things will speak to your heart. Boy, I'm glad the Lord's tarot is coming, aren't you? Now, I don't know, what, I don't know how, what, how bad it's going to get or how good it's going to get. I know we're on the winning team. Amen. Our captains never lost anything. We're all going to heaven. They're saved. I thank God for that. But until we get there, we're going to be put to the test. Let's be faithful uh, even unto death if necessary. Because if they do put us to death, we want to wake up in glory. Amen. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you tonight for helping us. Thank you so much for the crowd that's here, Lord, that weather the storm got here. And Lord, I am so appreciative of that. And I pray, Lord, that their coming to church was not in vain. Thank you, Lord, for the good song we heard from Sister Women or Daughter, Lord. Thank you for the good congregational singing. Thank you for the precious word, the message we had tonight. Please, God, help us not to give up on people because you don't and you haven't. Until you come, help us to be good witnesses in all that we say and do. In thy name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's stand to our feet. Invitation time. We want to come pray for somebody. Let's be like the Lord. Let's be long-suffering. The Apostle Paul talked about going to heaven or staying. He said he was torn between the two. Whether to go, whether to stay. He said, I better stay. Paul said, I'd, I'd like to go home to heaven, but I better stay. Many more need to hear it. We, we sometimes, we, are, we say, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. But if he did, who do you know would be left behind? Would you leave, would you leave behind a son or a daughter, a grandchild? Would you leave behind a brother or a sister, a mom or a dad? Would you leave behind a good friend, a good neighbor? One day, the father is going to look over to his son and say, Jesus, go get your bride. And Jesus will come in the clouds. He'll bring with him the souls of those who are there. The dead in Christ arise first. And those of us who are alive and remain shall be called up. After that, the tribulation period of seven years. Seven horrible years. Let's pray. Let's be a witness in church. Let's be a godly church and a holy church. Let's be an unusual people. Not self-righteous, but just godly. Trying our best to see folks get saved. Inviting them to church. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, how about that? We almost didn't have church and then we had it. And we had it and I think we had a good service. What do y'all think about it? Praise God. I even called Kevin. I even called Joe Ben, but he was already in town. And then, and then Kevin found out what was happening. So his kids said, let's go, Daddy. We got to go. So here they come. He said, Richard didn't call me. I can't dial that fast. And, uh, and so I said, well, I'm not going to mess with it anymore. Those can get here and get here. Those who can't, won't. And if, we, if the power comes on, it comes on. If it don't, I'll meet them at the door and say, go home. Or drag you in and say, turn your Bible anywhere. All right. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a great week. We will see you on Sunday, the Lord's Day. Until then, God bless you. You're dismissed.